I have met the enemy, and it's me. You ever find yourself saying that, being your own worst enemy? Of course you have. We all have, on occasion, been our own worst enemy. Hi, I'm Joe Tai, CEO of Values Coach, and your coach for this course on the 12 Core Action Values, exclusively for members of our Spark Plug Plus group coaching service. And today we're going to talk about the second cornerstone of authenticity, self-mastery. If you do not master yourself, you end up being your own worst enemy. You know, there's an old samurai paradox, and it says this, when the body is strong, it will bend to your commands. When the body is weak, you must give in to its demands. It's the same thing internally with the ego, with emotions, with your ambition. If you have a good reign on those things, you'll probably end up becoming the authentic meant-to-be person. If you do not have a good reign on those things, you're much more likely to end up becoming a fake and a fraud. And a lot of people get stuck inside what I call the iron triangle of false personality. And let's take a look at that. Ego. Ego is a good thing. People who have a really weak ego, they just sort of get pushed around. Peer pressure influences them. They never make a difference. They have low self-esteem. A strong ego is a good thing if you manage it. But we've all known people who have egos that are out of control. And very often they end up crashing and burning. Emotion. Now, emotions are a very beautiful, wonderful thing, aren't they? They are what make us human. Without emotion, we'd be robots. The problem is, if you're not managing your emotions, they will set you up to fail. Daniel Goleman wrote the pioneering books on emotional intelligence and working with emotional intelligence and social intelligence. And he points out the dangers of not having your emotions under control and the benefits of being able to effectively manage your emotions. And finally, ambition. Now, ambition gets a bad rap sometimes, but it's a good thing. Without ambition, we would all still be hunting and gathering. It's ambition that built civilization, that built cities, that built businesses, that built the great cathedrals. People who aspire to a world that's different, that's better than it is, who aspire to making their own lives different and better than they are. It can be a good thing if and only if it's authentic. Otherwise, you set yourself up for the old proverb, putting your, your ladder up against the wrong building and frantically climbing toward success. And the higher you go, the farther away you get from who you are meant to be. I worked with one guy who got solidly trapped inside this iron triangle. He, after 17 years with his employer, he got laid off one Friday afternoon. Now, what do you think that did to his ego, getting the pink slip? Squashed, right? What kind of emotions is he feeling? You know, sometimes when I'm giving speeches, I'll ask this question and throw it out to the audience. It can go on for five minutes. Hatred, anger, guilt, fear, shame, rejection, on and on and on. And then I ask, do you think all those negative emotions came by one at a time so he could deal with them? Or is it all at once? And he gets what Daniel Goleman calls an emotional hijacking, where his reaction does not go through the thinking process. He goes right from emotion to doing without any thinking in between. So this guy is feeling all these negative emotions because his ego has been flattened and now he has an ambition. I'm going to start my own business. I will show those people they cannot get away with this. They cannot do this to me. I'm going to start my own business and I'll take the business away from them. And he did. Now you would think with that fire in the belly and oh, he had it, that he would have been very successful, but you would be wrong. Why? Because it was not an authentic dream. He was not trying to build something. He was not trying to serve customers or to help other people. He was trying to hurt somebody. And, and his would-be customers could see right through that. And he ended up crashing and burning. And the secret to being authentic, the, the secret to self-mastery, learning how to manage your ego so that it doesn't get in the way. Ken Blanchard says E-G-O stands for edging God out. Managing your emotions effectively. 
so that you don't become your own worst enemy and let those emotions get out of control. That's when you say and do things you later regret, isn't it? When you're reacting from emotions in a negative way and not pursuing ambitions that are not authentic. Now, on the Members Only Resource website, there's a 90-page workbook. And if you want the advanced course on this, and I strongly encourage you to take the advanced course on this, the workbook is called the Winning the War with Yourself Field Manual. Now, I am not a big fan of these, uh, the warfare of business and all, you know, all the sun so want, want to be's. But there is one war that you must win, and that is the war with yourself. And this workbook will show you how to apply time-tested strategies of military effectiveness and success from Napoleon and Alexander the Great up through the current day to conquering that enemy within. One more thing. I talked about ego. Ego and soul, to me, you can kind of see this is the yin-yang symbol, the ancient Taoist symbol, the complementarity of opposite symbol. Ego and soul really represent that, the yin and the yang of, of you, don't they? And it's important to know each of them has their own place. Here's, how, here's my take. Ego is usually the loud, demanding, boisterous voice that you hear. And soul is that quiet whisper saying, this is the way. Remember in the first module we talked about who are you, W-A-Y, the way. This is the way, take it. And it's very easy for that soft whispering voice of soul to get overwhelmed and shouted out by the big, loud, brassy voice of ego. And the big challenge in self-mastery in many cases is to stop and listen for the voice of soul. What is it trying to tell you? Now, in the next module, we're going to talk about self-belief. You build on that, that foundation of self-mastery by believing in yourself so that you don't end up settling for a lot less in life. And I don't mean just in terms of money. I mean in terms of the quality of your life and your ability to make a difference in the world. So the next time, we're going to talk about that. But before that, please go through the workbook. Go through the module on self-mastery at least download and take a quick look at the Winning the War with Yourself field manual so that you can, it's hard to believe in yourself if you haven't at least made a start on mastering yourself. Now one more thing about self-mastery. One of the things that many, many people in this country have gotten in a lot of trouble with is their finances. A lot of people in over their heads in debt. Um, why? Because they have not managed their ego and their emotions and their ambition effectively, they've overspent. And if that's you, another resource on the members only website is the True Wealth series on your values and your money. 11 audio CDs. And in particular, I would encourage you to download and listen to the one on emotions and money because that directs, directly ties into what we're talking about today in terms of your personal finances. If um, one of my favorite book titles on money management is Larry Winget. You're broke because you want to be. And if you're broke, it's because you failed the test of self-mastery. So get to work on self-mastery. Tomorrow we'll come back and we will work on self-belief.